So friends, we have with us uh, Mustafa, who is a chemical engineer by profession. Right. Why did you select UBC as your university? Right. But I, I chose UBC because A, obviously it has one of the world-renowned programs in chemical engineering. It's consistently ranked within top 50 in the world. Was it like a thesis-based program or was it a course-based program? And you know, what were the requirements of the program? program was, is ranked one of the best in Canada. So Pay a lot of attention to the, the statement of purpose that you write. A new international student wants to be a TA. What is the process and how can it be helpful to them in future? Once you graduate, you know, how can your degree from UBC be helpful in interviews or, you know, getting job opportunities? The main advice I would give is definitely if you want to come to Canada, like don't give up. So... Friends, we have with us uh, Mustafa, who is a chemical engineer by profession, and he is also an international student who moved to Canada from Pakistan. So Mustafa, thank you so much for your time and doing this interview. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to be here with you, Arsh. So my first question to you, Mustafa, is why did you select UBC as your university? Because you had a background and you wanted to do your postgraduate, right? So why UBC and not any other university? Yeah, for sure. So... um my as you as you probably introduced myself like i i did actually my bachelor's from pakistan in chemical engineering from a university called nas it's like it's the top engineering school in pakistan and so after that i was looking for um you know where i could further increase my educational background and and skills in chemical engineering so i chose canada so that was the first part of it like there were a few options there you know germany a lot of my friends went to germany some went to us uh, I chose Canada because at the time, I think in U.S., the climate was not, uh, you know, the Trump was in the office and it wasn't, it didn't seem like a very immigration friendly climate. So I chose Canada because of immigration friendly policies. And I chose um, UBC. So I applied to five universities. I wanted to maximize my chances of getting in. Mm -hmm. um, it included UBC, University of Calgary, University of Regina, Newfoundland, and there was another university and I can't remember. Um, so, but, but I, I chose UBC because A, obviously it has a, one of the world renowned programs in chemical engineering is consistently ranked within top 50 in the world. Mm -hmm. And then also within Canada, it's like top two and three. Um, and, but that was not the, the main reason why I chose it. My main reason was. I knew that if I want to get a job in Canada, I need to make sure that not only have a edu right education from Canada, but also um, re some relevant work experience. And UBC mm -hmm. was one of two universities at that time. This is about like talking about in 2016 that were offering co-op opportunities to graduate students. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's different with the undergrad where a lot of universities do have that co-op opportunity so but for graduate students they're limited universities that were offering that so that was the main reason why i chose ubc and also its co-op program was is ranked one of the best in canada so mm -hmm. you know so for me that the choice was no-brainer I, I i got acceptance in all universities but obviously like ubc was my top choice so i i, I joined ubc Okay. And so your postgraduate program at UBC, was it like a thesis based program or was it a course based program? And you know, what were the requirements of the program? Right. So there are two main, uh, you know, programs that UBC offers for, for graduate students. There's one which is the course based program. The other one is a master based or, or sorry, thesis based master. So I'm, I'm going to talk about thesis based first. So thesis based is basically at UBC. The course requirement for thesis base is like, I think you have to do four courses and then the remaining is your thesis for, which account for like about six core, six courses or majority of your, you know, uh, graduate program. And at UBC that if you get into the thesis based program, it's typically fully funded by the university. Mm -hmm. So uh, you do have to pay a fee, but it's, a, it's, it's less. And then your stipend that you get from your, from UBC, uh, from the university, you can kind of pay for your university and also living expenses. And also, I think you can apply for some scholarships, uh, like some additional grants or fundings to, through federal government or uh, next gen or NRCAN. Like there are many, many different organizations that, that you can, uh, you can be eligible for funding depending mm -hmm. on your thesis. But the limitation with the thesis based uh, program is that because you're getting funding from your, you know, university and professors and they want you to work in their lab for a long time and 
the chances of getting into a co-op program are, you can get into a co-op program, but then doing a co-op for an extended period of time is something that I, I found, I talked to lots of many, lots of friends that it's just not possible. Like a lot of the time, they'll probably let you do a summer internship for three months, but if you're, which actually doesn't really constitute a co-op anyway, because for a co-op, you need to have at least four months. So, so that's the thesis base for the course base to do 10 courses basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can also do eight courses and a project, uh, you know, kind of like a, a, just a project. You still work with a, with a professor and that can account for like two additional courses, right? So, in, but in total, you need to have 30 credit hours. So it's the same with thesis base as well. And you have to pay your own fee mm-hmm. for that course based program. There's no international. There's no scholarship available for it, right? And there's no, uh, there's, there's some like little entrance scholarships that's just fifteen hundred dollars or something. It's just it's generally it's not that much, but uh, there's some some very s- small maybe financial need available, but but oh, majority of it, like you know costs you have to bear for sure. And the the advantage of MA is because you're you're funding your education yourself, you have this opportunity now to do actually a co-op, and you can do a co-op. For four months, eight months, typically co-ops are for eight months. Uh, but if you want to work more and gain more experience, then you can do like up to a year for a master mm-hmm. base. Like for, for a yeah. two year program, you can do up to one year co-op. So I definitely, because my main, main motivation was to, you know, work in Canada after graduation to get some pr- practical experience. I wanted to do a co-op that was super important for me from the very beginning. I knew that I had to do this program. Because I want to do a co-op, so yeah, I did the I did the image course based. Okay, so you did the course based program, and like, was there any prerequisites? Like, do you did you need to satisfy any you know percentage requirements or your IELTS score? What like what was the requirement? Yeah, so admission requirements are pretty like uh, I think they vary very slightly from university to university, but overall they're pretty much the same for most universities, which is. You need to have a minimum, uh, you know, I think GP of three out of four for your, mm-hmm. from your undergrad. If, because I, my undergrad was in chemical engineering and also I was going to a master's in chemical engineering, I didn't need to take any additional undergrad level courses, uh, um, mm-hmm. in order to take those advanced, advanced courses. But if, if let's say I was going from an, uh, chemical engineering to maybe a mechanical engineering master, which is also possible. Or maybe, you know, a computer science or artificial intelligence, like a data science program, then I might have to do some, some prerequisite courses, but I didn't have to take any. Requirements are, you know, pretty much the same. Three GP out of four is, I think, is, is what most universities look for. That's the minimum. And then IELTS, I believe it's 6.5, but again, like, mm-hmm. check, definitely check the universities. Uh, six or 6.5 is a minimum. I did TOEFL. I think these are the main, and obviously you have to, you have to make sure you start your application early on, pay a lot of your, a lot of attention to the, the statement of purpose that you write, like make sure you start it. A lot of students contact me and my rule of thumb was start your application one year before your intended date of like, you know, arrival in Canada. So that should give mm-hmm. you enough time to uh, write your purpose of statement and rewrite it, you know, uh, show it to your friends, review it with your family, you know, take that feedback. That's, that's really important. It's something I think we, we don't really appreciate when we are like in, in undergrad, but th- these are things that are really important. The statement of purpose is something that is kind of like, you know, your goals and aspiration and what you want to do. So it really needs to come from you. There are lots of templates. You can definitely go through it and read, but I would encourage like write it yourself. Um, then you need recommendation letters from, uh, you know, typically your professors or, or if you're working, like from your, one of your, you know, industry managers or some, you know, someone like a coworker. If I remember, I think, I think these are the main requirements basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a great uh, point that you mentioned, you know, for the statement of purpose, you should try to write it yourself, uh, start preparing in advance and, you know, mention as much as you can about yourself, your achievements, why you want to select this university. And of, of course, you know, the recommendation letters from your peers or your, you know, faculty members can be great, uh, mm-hmm. very helpful, right? So what can you say about the workload of your program, you know, the master's program? So workload, I think for master program, we do have to take some 
courses that are required for us to meet, like, you know, the, the requirement to graduate uh, from the master. So there are some courses that were advanced level chemical engineering related courses. And then, and then I think those are like four courses, if I remember correctly. And then six course, there are four other courses you, you can take, like, you know, optional courses. I still took, you know, I was interested in like clean energy and, and, and electrochemistry. So I took some of those courses that were not required, but I, I, I took them. And uh, so you can kind of balance. So you have to take those base level courses that are required for your graduation. Mm -hmm. And then also if, if you're, if you're kind of like trying to balance your coursework, then definitely don't take all the hard courses in one semester. Typically like uh, people take like three courses in the first term and then, you know, four courses in the next term. And then at, in the last term, they can do like the project and one course. I was, um, I was kind of like very ambitious. So I, I did more, I, I completed more credit requirements than was, than was needed. So I actually did in the first uh, semester, I did three courses. In the next semester, I did five graduate level courses. And then the final term, I did a project and three additional courses. So I, I actually graduated with more credits than I needed. But, but as a result of it, like I was able to get, you know, gather a lot of knowledge obviously like learn about different subjects definitely. and was also able to do a project and it was uh definitely i wouldn't recommend <laughs> that to most people because i was also doing a part-time job to you know support my living to some extent which is um a bit challenging but um yeah like definitely try to it, it really up to you right like how much you want to yeah do. So managing your courses is a very, very important thing, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're handling other things like part-time jobs, right? So now let's talk about your teaching assistant journey, right? So you also have some experience as a TA from UBC. So if a new international student wants to be a TA, what is the process and how can it be helpful to them in future? Yeah, I should clarify, actually, I don't have TA experience. Um, okay. yeah, so I, I never really did a TA because uh, I just, I didn't have enough time, but okay. there are opportunities for sure. Like you can actually, you know, contact a professor, typically like those jobs are posted. There are actually lots of jobs on the university and also in Vancouver, there are lots of like jobs off campus as well that you can do. So there are lots of like opportunities to, you know, uh, do TA ships or, you know, just work in a club, for example, uh, like a, a book book club or a sailing club. I'm also part of the UBC sailing uh, group or club. And then you can also do a lot of like, you know, the student union. Uh, there's, there's a student union, so there's lots of jobs available there. Mm -hmm. uh, for TA, TA specifically, there are jobs that are, you know, typically like uh, professors are looking for. It's usually like, uh, you know, checking assignments. And there's no like classes. I never took any class from a TA myself. But if, if, if the students are struggling, then they can reach out to the TA sometime. But I never, I never felt the need to do it. So I don't really have mm -hmm. that extensive experience with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. So once you graduate, you know, how can your degree from UBC be helpful in interviews or, you know, getting job opportunities? Does UBC help you in getting a job or do you have to figure out everything by yourself? Yeah. So I think, uh, UBC as a, as a university where, you know, it kind of supports, um, students during the co-op placement is actually quite, uh, you know, it's, it's quite up there. So it will mm -hmm. definitely, um, prepare you for the co-op to get the co-op opportunities. Uh, and by that, I mean, it will basically train you on how to write cover letter resume. Uh, you can book like, you know, sessions with co-op coordinators to practice your interview skills. Um, they have different workshops too. So it's, it's actually a program that you have to start complete certain workshops to get into the co-op program first. Okay. And then, you know, they'll, they'll kind of help you and prepare you to get co-op opportunities. Um, so for that, it's, it's pretty good. But after graduation, uh, there is, I think, a, you know, placement office. You can typically like jobs are posted there. But in Canada, what I found that works the most is, you know, networking. And then mm -hmm. also, if you have experience in during your co-op, like that is probably the most important one that will help you to get a job after you graduate. So for example, in my case, uh, my co-op, I did in a company that I'm currently working at basically. So I, I did a one-year co-op 
and then I graduated and then I was looking for a job. So I, I just reached out to my previous uh, manager and then uh, they said, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a job opportunity here. They interviewed me within a week and I was hired essentially. So uh, I think networking is, is what I'm saying is the most important. Even if you, for some reason, don't have a co-op opportunity, you can still reach out to people in different companies, you know, try and invite them to maybe coffee or just LinkedIn, you know, just like you reached out to me and just talk to them about their experiences and share your passion and your enthusiasm about certain, you know, things that you want to do. And yeah, this way you can, you can essentially, you know, get a job here. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, let's talk about, you know, the fee structure about your program. You know, can you please share a bit of information about how how much it will cost for a person to do a master's from UBC? Yeah. So at the time I uh, was, you know, I got into UBC in 2016 and yeah, September 2016. The At the time UBC had, you know, the fee structure was basically a per term basis. It wasn't per course based. I think a mm-hmm. lot of some other universities have like uh, fees. They, they take fees based on like courses, but UBC had like a flat rate for flat rate for a term. So that's why I was, you know, that's the reason why I was able to do more courses than I needed as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so per term at that time it was about seven thousand dollars, and so three terms was like roughly around twenty twenty one thousand dollars. When you are doing co op, you also have to you don't pay the term fee, right? This is a I must clarify this. So when you, when you're not studying full time and you go out to, to do a co-op, which is like full time, 40 hours per week work, then you don't really pay that, but you do pay like some amount, which is a, you know, kind of continuing enrollment fee and also like sometimes student fees. Mm -hmm. So that was about for, because I did a one year co-op, I think for three terms, it was roughly around $1,500. But during co-ops, like you're obviously earning. So I think my salary was like something around between three, $3,000 Three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars. I can't remember exactly how much it was per month. Mm-hmm. So if you you know you do if you do the math, that's like what thirty five thousand more or less, yeah. right, for the whole year. Yeah. So that's that's another reason why I encourage people to come through this, you know, the, the to do the co op route because essentially whatever you spent on your education, you can actually earn it back. So since since I started my co op, actually I've been independent. So I haven't I didn't really need to ask any money for my family and also like for the last term i paid the the tuition fee myself so yeah i mean that's something something to keep in mind yeah so co-op can help you in two ways right you can also earn money be independent and pay for your fees and it can also help you in future once you graduate right because there is a good chance the same employer will hire you based on uh, their experience with you definitely not only the same employer but other employers as well when they're Mm -hmm. you know hiring for full-time especially for full-time positions Mm -hmm. they're looking for candidates with you know either co-op experience or some kind of a prior experience i do a lot of hiring i certainly look for those things too yeah Definitely. And my last question to you will be, you know, what is one piece of advice you would like to give to an individual, like an international student who is, you know, planning to come to UBC? Yeah. So I think the the main advice I would give is definitely if you want to come to Canada, like don't give up, like there are lots of opportunities uh, at the time when you're, you know, in your home country and you're looking for you're looking to maybe move abroad and study and change your life, I guess. It does seem daunting as it seems a bit hard that, you know, you're moving to a new country and it's, it's like you have to like, you know, pay for your fees and like just move, moving to a new country is like a whole new experience. So just don't be afraid of that. Like definitely reach out to uh, people who are already there who have gone through that journey. Typically, like people are are willing to help. If someone doesn't apply, that's fine because that just probably means they're busy. So, but someone will reach out to you. Like I it definitely helped me a lot. And you know, ask your ask questions. Definitely do upfront work as well. Like um, don't be like you know, just reach out to people and not you know, not doing your own basic research, right? A lot of the information is available on the on the universe. Basically, just be persistent, right? If you mm-hmm. if you want to come to this, there's definitely a way. But just be persistent and like don't give up and don't lose hope. And if specifically, I think uh, related with education, like I would say, try to get into a uh, into a program that does offer co-op opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think uh, for we we discussed that a few times. It's quite important. 
So it will it will definitely help you not in, only during your studies but also uh, later on in your career. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great advice actually. Focusing on co-op and being persistent. Uh, so thank you so much, Mustafa, for your time. And I'm sure you know people can learn a lot from your experience, and it can help them to smoothen their overall experience in Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, no, pleasure is all mine. Thanks for reaching out. <laughs>